So the first OpenCL concept we're going to talk about are global and local dimensions. And global and local dimensions are the way OpenCL specifies the parallelism they want to execute. So this is how you're going to tell OpenCL if you want 1,000 threads or 10,000 threads or 100,000 threads. So in global dimensions, you're defining parallelism, and you're defining it in a 1D, 2D, or 3D sort of array. And what this does is it specifies the global dimensions for each kernel execution. Now the kernel is the code you're executing. So the way to think about this is a work item, or thread, is executed for every point in the global dimensions. So if I have a 3D global dimension that has a thousand points in it, there's going to be a thread or work item executed for every one of those points, and each one of those threads is going to run the kernel code that you wrote. So let's look at some examples. Say I want to process a thousand samples of audio, and I want to have one thread work on each sample. Then maybe I'll have my global dimension just be a thousand, and then I'll have one thread for every sample in the audio of a thousand twenty-four work items. Maybe I want to process a high-definition video frame. Well, that's 1920 by 1080, so that's 2 million work items. So I could specify my global dimensions as 1920 by 1080, which would mean I specify 2 million work items or 2 million threads, and I have one thread for every pixel in my video. Maybe I want to process 3D MRI data. So I've got a 256 cube set of voxels. So this gives me 16 million work items, 16 million threads. Now, when I go to actually execute this on the GPU, it's not going to run 16 million at once. OpenCL is going to split this up into whatever size will actually fit on the GPU, but logically, there's going to be one thread or one work item running for every point in this three-dimensional grid. Now, maybe I want to process high-definition video differently. Maybe I want to have one thread for each line. Then maybe I should just have global dimensions that are 1080. Then I'll get 1,080 work items, one for each line. Or maybe I want to process my high-definition video in 8x8 blocks. Then I have 240 by 135 as my global dimensions. So that's only 32,000 threads or 32,000 work items. What you see here is you choose your global dimensions in order to express the parallelism in the application that you're writing. So we had global dimensions. We also have local dimensions. So the local dimensions break down the global dimension into local work groups that is groups of work items or groups of threads that run together. So for example, if I have global dimensions of 100 by 512, I can have local dimensions of anything that divides that nicely, but I couldn't have local dimensions of 10 by 10, because 10 doesn't divide into 512 evenly, or 16 by 16, because it doesn't divide into 100 evenly. Now, why do we have this? Because each of these work groups, each of these groups of local threads that are together, they're logically executed together on one physical processor or one compute unit in OpenCL world or NVIDIA streaming multiprocessor. So these things execute together, which means they can synchronize. And that's something you can't do in general. So synchronization is only allowed with work items within the same work group. So if you have threads that need to synchronize while they're running, you need to make sure they're in the same local work groups which obviously makes it important to choose your local dimensions so that they enable the synchronization you need. So, question for you, why is synchronization only allowed between work items in the same work group? Well, the answer here is it's easier to build GPUs or any processor where you have limited synchronization. It's a lot harder to program when you have to have limited synchronization, but it's a lot easier to build.